Hello and welcome back everybody on Aikis Racing channel. Marco from Monza, from the iCorner, as usual. Sorry for my latency in the last couple of days, but unfortunately I've been under the attack of the flu, the seasonal Italian flu that every year catches quite a lot of people. This time was my turn, so sorry for my voice, first of all. I apologize for being so far from new content, for uploading new content. And I'm really sorry, but I was in my deathbed for the entire weekend plus the days after I had any way to do my usual job and just uh, I was too broken and too destroyed by night as I usually do to record videos and play video games etc. So really my apologies, please uh, accept my sincere uh, let's say attitude to have the will to publish more and more but unluckily I was not in the condition to do it. That being said, welcome back because today I have to explain a bit maybe what is uh, something did in the past and what is something that I'm going to start today and continue hopefully for the rest of the year. The reason is I had in my mind the F1 eras, the Gulf season that was grid under licensed fights using GP2 as a tool to tell a story that was the story of all the world champions of Formula 1 but also was the tentative let's say to combine with a modern let's say video game a silly and fantasy and fake tentative to have on the same era all the world champions and all the world champions in second I would say all the runners up maybe it's better to say so for every Formula 1 season driven by the team winning the constructor championship or maybe the team winning first and second place in the driver's ranking or maybe just the winner of the championship plus the runner up regardless of what was the team winning also the constructor championship and back then thanks to the easy way for gp2 of micropros to arrange uh, things mods etc was almost easy to combine for example in a 26 slots starting grid the world champion for 1950 for example Nino Farina with the Alfa Romeo team together with the runner up of that season the same for the 51 season where Juan Manuel Fangio was the world champion and second was someone else so and so and the division was made let's say by eras taking uh, more in consideration also the technological side of Formula 1 that at least in the 50s in the 60s maybe had some links with the normal car production or the innovative attempt to bring on a racetrack new technologies then developed for our normal consumer buyers of cars a thing that I think uh, was also fascinating and also enjoyable because as a normal consumer without the possibility ever to drive a Formula 1 car at least you had the scenario to see new technologies coming on a racetrack the final victory in some way selecting the best technology and then that technology was something moved to road production and if you were rich enough to purchase something that was a winning idea on a racetrack, on a race weekend, whatever. That was the initial idea. But unfortunately, since the last episode that was published by myself one year ago, more or less, maybe more, GP2 in my, on my computer has started to not work anymore via DOSBox. And so far, I haven't in some way solved the mystery. So I'm not leaving this theme I will uh, retake it as soon as I can and as soon as I will solve this silly problem just on uh, Microprose games not on IndyCar Racing 1, IndyCar Racing 2, not on Indy 500 but unluckily with the GP2 there's something not really working on my PC and because I'm not an expert so far I haven't solved in any way the possibility to go on but in my mind still remained in some way the idea of uh, sooner or later play an entire Formula 1 season from 1950 up to the current year in the development 
And because we are close to the launch of the 2023 season, that unluckily, I would say, at least in my opinion, in my personal taste, it's not anymore something uh, special, something credible. Like Flavio Biratore used to say, it is just business. And so you can have a, a multi-winning car based on a soda business or a completely UK built made uh, car with a German stripe on top. I mean, it's not anymore, uh, I would say, even a real garagist bringing its product on race day, confronting himself with the rest of the world. So year by year, I must admit, I really have lost the momentum, the, the love for Formula One of the last 15 years, more or less. But I've not lost the love for Formula One of the old times. Maybe because I'm becoming old, can be a lecture key of this matter. But honestly, I still feel some, how to say, pure love for uh, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, up to the 90s. Then something has changed and I think not for the best of this sport. That, as said, uh, is uh, more or less uh, more a business than anything else. I don't like also, generally speaking, just one set of rules for everybody, just one technology allowed, just one uh, type of engine, one type of uh, tire producer allowed. To me, when it is a formula, in some way, I think it is not really linked and thought to stay aligned with the reality of the rest of the world. That's why I do prefer, I don't know, the WEC, just because different technologies involved, just because different solutions, just because the usage of biofuel, etc. Or, for example, at least IndyCar, that has, yes, one set of rules, but at least every Sunday, I don't know, it is not uh, declared who is the winner just watching the qualifying result or just watching the previous season. And so, to me, Formula One has still a special place in my heart. But, as said, I do prefer to watch the old Formula One way up to the years 2000s, maybe, more or less. And so I wanted to go back with a sort of time machine to play with you something that I would have played anyway in my free time, but at least here can be shared. Maybe we can talk about drivers, cars, uh, particular seasons, etc. And uh, we can do it, if not in the way I figured out one year ago, with the differentiating eras then uh, combined into a single season, racing on all the tracks available back then. At least we can do it, but in a slightly different way, and maybe enjoying uh, ourselves uh, while we sit down on the cockpit of a time machine, Thanks again to our beloved video games. How? With this special effect today, eh, Marco? Maybe some of you already know this kind of game, some others not. But I implore you, <laughs> don't give a try to this game. Download the 200 gigabytes of data of season from 1950 to 2022 at least donate one euro to Valerio Bertolotti and his group, a group of true passionate petrol heads, true passionate about Formula One, true passionate also from a technological point of view because they have the resources and the know-how. Every three months update an incredible, 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 incredible database that I think every passionate Formula One virtual driver should give a try once in his life, at least his or her life. Because here you have all the seasons of Formula One. And luckily I have discovered very recently, very late, this title. But today this great game that is Formula One Challenge by EA Sports coming from year 2002, combining season 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, when basically the license uh, rights to use the Formula One name for EA were vanishing and we were in the period where maybe there was the first uh, attempt to 
make a sort of industrial title each year the Formula One theme. We arrived to Formula One Challenge where the Easy Engine, ISI, that we know very well behind R Factor, GTR, GTR2, Automobilista, etc. Ciao Nils, grande. Uh, I would say the base was that one. It is still playable with steering wheels, pedals, external gear change uh, and blah 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 and offers the gota, if I can say so, of Formula One from the first ever race held in 1950 on the Silverstone Grand Prix that technically is the first ever Formula One race within a Formula One championship, at least for drivers. We have to wait until 1958 for the first constructor title. But really, we, we can enjoy every driver, every B car, C car, every re Formula One regret, whatever. It is everything here, okay? So please, if you are really passionate, give it a try. And after a try, at least give, please, one euro to Valerio Bertolotti and his group, because they are maintaining this game updated every time they can. There are many great people full of talent behind and uh, I think they deserve our support. Personally, after the first uh, download and the first play, I have donated 10 euros to Valero Bertolotti. It's all fair, I'm not, uh, I mean, uh, telling uh, cheating or uh, false information, it's all there. And uh, I've decided to start every single season of Formula One from 1950, and today we are in 1950, and we will be on track very, in a couple of uh, seconds and after each season completed I will publish my euro donation to Valerio and I think that one euro for uh, 72 seasons makes 72 euros that is not maybe a popular uh, amount of money but I would say how much do we pay even on a steam on a beautiful platform like steam is a game 19 euros 20 euros 30 euros and we are paying those money basically to great studios or great professional groups of people that make a living out of selling their product valerio and his team are basically giving you for free this game so they are just because they don't have the commercial rights about it but as we are a great web community for many things I would say at least one euro from our pocket can leave our pocket and go to Valerio and his group I think it is more than deserved and really one euro it's a ridiculous amount for a Formula 1 game 72 seasons maybe not perfectly reproduced uh, millimeter by millimeter okay but they are still working and improving without receiving more money for this so that was my commercial for today sorry for being so long it was in a way the initial chapter and was well indicated uh, to say that maybe it was a boring moment uh, for you i can show you if you don't know the game step by step not the installation but because it's very easy but just the situation of starting from the beginning playing today the 1950 season not entirely but just with the 10% race for each appointment it, it will be very easy because there were just uh, seven Grand Prix maybe for that season we will try to win the championship in personificating the character of Nino Farina the Italian F1 driver race car driver that first above all won the first Formula 1 title and I will challenge myself together with you with this new theme i do hope you will enjoy it because with a sort of similar formula already seen for my around the world in 24 hours the old japan sports prototypes the sports car 100 minutes and so on i'm going to try briefly to also tell the story of the world champion also to tell the story maybe of the car whatever i can share with you and i can use to stimulate in some way your passion, your interest, your curiosity over men's, drivers, machines, technicians. I think it will be 
a nice tribute to one of the best history we can even imagine to have nowadays if we take the recent history of this sport compared to the past and even if the glorious past of this motorsport will always allow to keep Formula 1 in some way in a special place in our hearts. I do think that after almost three quarters of a century of Formula 1 was the time from my side to take back the theme and tell maybe some stories that must be remembered and they deserve uh, absolutely a lot to be also for new generations a sort of uh, pillar watching Formula 1 because believe it or not Formula 1 nowadays has never been uh, so far from uh, its uh, pillars so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome in the history of Formula 1 thanks to Valerio Bertolotti Formula 1 challenge season 1950 2022 and 2023 will arrive very soon so maybe by the end of the year we will play also that episode and i hope you will uh, surf with me with a beautiful special time machine welcome and let's go on track ciao in a second and so welcome in 1950 with the f1 challenge vb edition valerio bertolotti grande valerio and his team and so we are ready with the Alfa Romeo 158 that was, uh, let's say, a pre-second World War state-of-the-art racing car but for the first uh, ever F1 season was not uh, for sure new was just something left over before the Second World War but anyway, was uh, quite a great car that allowed uh, Nino Farina, the Italian, to become the first ever F1 champion. If you are interested in the history of Formula 1, there is also a beautiful video in the link description explaining very well which was the first F1 car, because before 1950 the history, let's say, was absolutely in some way different from what we think. I mean, this car was not the first F1 car, was just something coming from the period pre-Second World War, and so was competitive but was old material combined with uh, a lot of others great material like we can see sorry here so for the first ever season of formula one recognized with the drivers championship we had also many teams drivers nowadays forgotten maybe not Achille Varzi with his Scuderia for Scuderia Ambrosiana or TASO Matthias I mean I'm not going to go into each single equipe or team but let's say was uh, a mixed starting field with uh, Scuderia Ferrari yes using its own material produced after the after the end of the Great War but really Scuderia Milano, Joe Kelly, Geoff Crossley, Peter Whitehead I mean maybe some of them will sound familiar for you if you are passionate uh, also about uh, history but uh, the majority are, at least from my personal knowledge, absolutely unknown or were unknown until I've uh, tried to play this game for the first time. Anyway, we are going with the Alfa Romeo team, choosing between Fagioli, Fangio, Reg Parnell, obviously our Nino Farina. The nationality is not needed to be said, maybe was Italy. And so that's it we can start the championship that will uh, fire up from the Silverstone Grand Prix. From a difficulty point of view, sorry, I forgot to say for the sake of this uh, video editions, the difficulties will be set to 90% for the AI driver's strength, the aggression will be 50, the damage multiplier will be 100. Consider also that I will start every time from the back of the grid, at least to see some passes. But uh, I don't want to spend uh, more words on this. Let's accept a new championship. With the flag rules, yes for sure. Three times the usage of tires and fuel, so we will load in totally what will be the 90 liters fuel capacity of the Alfa Romeo. 
and we will do a 10% uh, race length to have in one single episode all the races of the season and also we will have a bit of thrill let's say because the fuel usage and the tire wear will be multiplied by three times and it will uh, affect a lot our driving style and so our story and history will start from Silverstone let's go all the teams we can jump all the sessions of practice I mean qualification will be dry with the on pole position Fangio then Fagioli Ascari Prince Bira Peter Whitehead Reg Parner the top six let's run also the warm-up let's prepare for the race the car setup is something prepared uh, previously the only thing will be seven laps of uh, coverage so I would go for soft tires and maybe 90 liters in total yes that's it and let's go to race as you can see the ambient is exactly as it was uh, back then there is also a nice presentation I would say of all the cars is just very quick I don't know why and at the end you find yourself with the car pardon my my bad start ok here we are You can see also my hands as usual and I've not used the what a silly boy I am. I haven't watched the track conditions so I'm racing with the dry tires on a wet day or at least the track is a bit wet but we can get rid of uh, our contenders in some way P11 already very far from the others let's try to catch Louis Chiron and also to have a bit of acceleration I've used a fourth gear very short because the possibility of fine-tuning setup are not really precise and so what happened then I had the choice of a long fourth gear without top speed or an almost short fourth gear this one but at least will guarantee a bit of acceleration also in the last available gear plus uh, you can see me suffer a bit you can see maybe new things from uh, trust master here I have purchased a uh, sort of late Christmas gift for myself. We'll follow also a video about it. It's a new set of Trustmaster racing tools. Very nice so far, I must say because I wanted to feel the force like Luke Skywalker and I take the opportunity to say hello to my friend Corrado or 77 Boa 77 on YouTube and not only that told me sooner or later you will have to maybe upgrade your racing rig and I did it So we have a base wheel named 
GT GT Second Edition Mark II on which I can uh, apply Thrustmaster GT 28 millimeters, sorry, 28 centimeters steering wheel, but I have also purchased a squared open wheel steering wheel for uh, formulas. Basically, you know, I like aesthetics, so. I decided to purchase everything I could, plus uh, on my feet, under my feet, you can see a different set of pedals, it's the Thrustmaster load cell version, recently discounted by the producer. Plus, for uh, more modern races and mods, you will see also a different uh, knob for uh, the gear shift H8. Sorry, the graph the graph frame root and chasing the right partner now. The aim of this long season will be no old aces of the past, old technology, historic battles. in a more simulative way, obviously. 10% races, few laps to propose a content that with a single episode more or less will uh, present entire seasons raced. You can do it also on your home, at your home, sorry. with the aim, especially driving Nino Farina Alfa Romeo 158 the target will be, anyway, win the championship with the backbone world champion for each title, while, sorry, for each season while some lucky crashed Direct on the pit. Okay, P8. Catching now Parnell, but I must be very cautious with the engine because with a short foot here to have a decent top speed, but especially acceleration. I must not use too much the red zone of the revs because these old engines are prone to blow up. And so there will be not only a decent tire management, 
not only fuel management. But also a reliability management as much as possible. And currently we are not scoring points. Two laps left. Because back then points were awarded from the first placed to the fifth, eight, six, four, three, two. There was an added point for the quickest driver on Sunday. Two laps to go, less now. Following Louis Chiron, Fagioli and Someone else that have lost Fangio. Ooh. At least they are maybe all grouped here. Silverstone was so bumpy back then. Obviously, these tracks coming for F1 Challenge. Ooh, destroyed Fangelo! He maybe destroyed the car. Last corner. Car broken. LP. Three, maybe, yes. Wow. Super wow. So let's see if we are penalized or not. No, third, okay. And Fangio? No, unluckily I kicked out from the race Fangio. No, where is Fangio? Here, P12. So, with a lot of surprise, the first race ever of Formula One as said, with a mix uh, starting field uh, of uh, not proper Formula 1, some Formula 2, the ex uh, voiturette in French, maybe, has happened with the Prince Bira winning, 
Alberto Ascari, Ases Nino Farina III, Chiron, Chiron sorry, and Fagioli. With this level of points, 86432, even if we had to wait until 1958 for the first formal Formula One constructor championship won by Van Wall, if I'm not wrong, but for the sake of this game, eight points the Enrico Plate or Enrico Plate. Racing team Alfa Romeo 6, Ferrari 6, Alfieri Maserati 3. Let's go on. Next stop, the Monte Carlo Street Circuit for the Monaco Grand Prix. Again, the update of the current situation and let's go. Again, we jump practice 1, practice 2, practice 3, practice 4. Let's have the qualification. Fangio, Fagioli, Ascari, Prince Bira, Whitehead, Louis Rosier, the first top 6. Warm up with dry conditions. Ready for the race. I have already asset up prepared and we will have to cope with 10 laps so I think I will load all the 90 liters available yes, for security reason soft tires, why not? so we can go on track Think the names especially in this race I will wait a second the start of the race because the start finish line is where say there was, uh, or there is nowadays, uh, a swimming pool area, a rascas area, and drivers usually tended to mix a lot here. Then you can go almost flat out, pass back markers, this is the modern Monte Carlo start finish line. Up here to reach the casino. in 2004 for my personal job to sleep here at the Lons in Monte Carlo. In this version of the track there isn't the hotel available today. Gasometer, gaso, how do you say in French? I don't know, I should ask to Tom Pet Singamer. The steering wheel is not anymore straight, as you can see, after the bump against, I don't remember which driver, Goretto, P12. The tunnel, 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 tunnel of love like the sun of the streets. Oops, this is terminal and <laughs> I am under the sea like finding Nemo together with Mr. Hampshire. And so yes, I am retired, the right thing. So Reg Parler wins together 
on the podium with uh, Teodoro Serafini Ferrari and Raymond Sommer, Luis Chiron and Fieri Maserati, Prince Vira, Enrico Plate. So maybe a short uh, classification for drivers. Let's see. Yes, Enrico Plate 10, 8 Parnell, 6 Ascari, Chiron, Serafini, as, as Nino Farina 4, Raymond Sommer 4, Luigi Fagioli 2nd. Not good Marco, but we go on. Alfa Romeo is coming close to Ferrari from a point of view of constructors. Next stop, Indianapolis. Yes, because back then the Indy 500 was a normal appointment for Formula One World Championship. was raced by Americans and Europeans, but year after year then has become more a matter of uh, American drivers and American cars that anyway scored points for the Formula One World Championship. But up to a certain point some European drivers and teams tried to win this magic race. We can remember in the 50s Alberto Ascari trying to race and win at Indianapolis. Maybe we can then go a bit further with Jim Clark, Graham Hill, I mean many great aces of Europe have tried this uh, competition but anyway today we will go with just a Formula One uh, starting field update update let's go so we can jump uh, practice one practice two practice three practice four Qualifying, Fangio, Fagioli, Rosier, Ascari, Prince Bira, Whitehead, the top six. Let's go to the warm up. Let's go to the race. We will load the previously prepared car setup with just the addition of all the 90 liters, 15 laps coverage while the race is 20 laps hmm. so who knows what will happen we will have to lift the throttle maybe at the end of the race let's go let's have the names ready to start the result was tough to start and the pavé of Indianapolis is more like a friendly track. No GPS has been uh, abused for the preparation of all the tracks of F1 Challenge. You can decide how precise each track can be with the settings of the game. Anyway, the Alfa Romeo was the best car back then, despite coming from what was the period of the 30s before the Second World War. The Norese crashed, the best partner, the the outside, Chiron maybe the same, Prince Bira also before the start finish line P7 after just one lap. The Pave is tremendous on the first feedback. I mean, the steering wheel becomes light, but you feel a lot of vibration, then when you are on asphalt, you go back to feel the force. Well made. Whitehead in front of us. We can take the slipstream and draft at least. The same with Bonetto maybe. A look also to the refs, not in red zone because the, the engine can blow up. Serafini from outside. Albert Toscari from outside. Now just Fagioli and Fangio in 
front of us. Let's try here internally, then the craft is slipstream, yes. Whoa. Very quick, this Alfa Romeo on straight. So we are currently on top. Almost one second over the Fangio. One second and a half now. So we are definitely competitive here. But 13 laps, top right corner, 13 laps of coverage for the fuel, 17 laps to go, just three registered so far. So all we do a pit stop, a splash and go at the end. Or we do not finish this race with the fuel. Maybe with six seconds of advantage we can lift a bit the throttle and just resist with, with, without using all the top speed we have. Some crashes here on the left. Fangio almost 9 seconds now 16 laps to go now 15 in a couple of meters or max yes, 15 to go and 12 with the tank maybe it is working a bit the lift of the throttle, who knows we had a 5 laps gap at the beginning of the race 15 covered 22 to be done. Now the gap is uh, three laps, so maybe we can risk to avoid final splash and go. Find you 15 seconds far. Good. Bill Rezi out on the left. 14 to go. 11. Cover it! No! 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 No, the car is broken in a terminal way, maybe. You can try to think to go to the pit. Let's try. is uh, running uh, very badly, completely prone to stop. Because corner, corners are on the left, so unless uh, I do not stop to Turn the car. Well, this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> On three wheels, like should be enough. Do not turn too much on the right. At least the car, yeah, more or less stays aligned. So we pass Luigi Fagioli externally on three wheels. 
I said this is not a simulation but just an historic deep dive. And the history of Formula One. Twelve laps to go. Ten laps in the tank. Three wheels left. Still the wheel very light now. I can stay straight without touching. side of the car, maybe, and the steer, it has a wheel in the front end. Okay, they are crashing! Okay. steering wheel is undrivable. Just a matter of exiting yes, the brickyard. Okay, let's try to go to the pit where I fear it will be terminal. So let's scroll to the end of the peak to find some retirements, maybe. Because the jump on the brickyard is definitely an issue. not lose the front right tire. I'm starting to laugh and I'm not sure I will stop to laugh. So how Heroic anyway was back in the days. Be an F1 driver using uh, state of the art technology back then, but uh, also with, uh, can you imagine, a full day of travel to reach Indianapolis with propellers, planes, logistic it was not the one we know today. To just race one single appointment in US, scoring points for the World Championship. back in Europe and go on with the UK, Italy, Switzerland, France. To clinch the world title, the first one. with some retirement. I can't believe it. I must not 
about to lose the control of the car. I did it. Sorry. Was jumping like a kangaroo. P6. Sorry for the P5 position. The steering wheel is completely broken now. Or almost. So we're seeing uh, how heroic, heroic was uh, being a driver in the 50s. Very dangerous. Very out of normality in some way. Those were the golden years of motorsport, a newly formed world champion just in 1950, while again, again. No, corner number two is uh, absolutely drivable like this, I must reduce the speed next time. And so was the 1950 the first real world title because previously, prior to the second world war, let's say just the beginning of the 19th century, sorry the 20th century, First official Grand Prix it was in France in 1906, maybe. I do not remember. And basically, for 40 years, car constructors and uh, drivers and teams just followed each single Grand Prix to demonstrate the validity of their technologies. Just from 1950 there was a world title grouping uh, cars and drivers all together. So it's true that Formula 1 has already 73 years with the starting of the season in a couple of days in March, but there was almost half of a century, completely dedicated to single races, single Grand Prix money, if you like, and the names were the, the Alfa Romeos, the Talbot Lago, Fiat, a luckily Audi, Union or Auto Union, if you want to pronounce it as English people. Wait a second, Bonetto is retiring. I don't know. Let's try to avoid to jump with the kangaroo. avoid Bonetto. I did a mistake. For 
laps to go and three laps in the tank. Let's see what I can do. Maybe with a retirement to reach P5 at least. So yes, Auto Union, Union the old Audi was uh, a celebrated car technology, but honestly, it was just the expression of Nazism, Nazism, I don't know how to pronounce it, and German technology to demonstrate to the world they felt superior, but then, P5 in the meantime, good, and uh, so I've never felt really in love with German manufacturers for this show up of uh, muscles that was just covering what they were preparing before the start of the Second World War. Fangio retired also, P4, good. And so the, the fights were uh, between Italians, Germans and French manufacturers. UK arrived uh, a bit later in the 60s, more often than in the 50s. P3, in front of me just Brunetto and I don't know the leader. And uh, I was mentioning the pre-war era just because this F1 Challenge Valerio Bertolotti edition VB is preparing under the hood a mod to play with this to be played with this game combining all the pre-second world war era with all the special cars available back then and some also old tracks were available converted by a factor whatever and so basically I think that by the end of this year if not already for the Easter patch summer patch will happen to have a Basically, all the most important car teams available for this game, as I said, is not a simulation, but anyway, you have the easy engine running for this title. Maybe I'll meters in the tank, but Bonetto and the other guy, Whitehead, have not stopped me for the lack of fuel, like I'm going to do. Let's try to crawl to the end. A few cars still in the race. So this game is basically combining a game named uh, like Spirit of Speed of Microcos came out at the end of the 90s I finished the fuel Yes, let's try to crawl anyway in neutral Checkered flag for a P3, maybe. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love this game. I absolutely love this game. Okay. So we should be P3 at the end, behind Bonetto and Whitehead. 
so I can maybe press yes third place confirmed on three wheels uh, and without any more fuel in the tank not far from the P2 so Felice Bonetto wins Whitehead as as Nino Farina despite the name Ike is racing Louis Chiron and Toulot the Grafenried if I'm correct let's go so 10 Bira 9 Chiron 8 Chiron sorry 8 As so we are quite well uh, I mean, it's, is it already the driver standings? Yes, so we are back in the game for the championship, I would say. Definitely. Then uh, Parnell Bonetto like us, 8 points. Ascari, Whitehead, Serafini, Sommer, Fagioli, De Grafenried. Good. Constructors with Alfa Romeo finally at the top. Ferrari 16. Enrico Plate 12, 9 Maserati, Alfieri Maserati, Scuderia Milano 8, Peter Whitehead, private team 6. And we are ready after the Indy 500 with a podium finish on a 3 cycle that the Alfa Romeo has become thanks to my high skill levels of driving. We go in Switzerland, a country that after the Le Mans disaster of 1955 where the Mercedes of Peter Levesque crashed and uh, finished uh, with the engine flying against the crowd with unluckily 91 people dead in that occasion Switzerland from that negative Le Mans edition decided to not host anymore any form of motorsport within its territory but if I'm not wrong recently a few years ago a minor challenge or a minor motorsport event has uh, reappeared also in Switzerland and so there are things uh, linked to the past and other things are linked uh, to the present. After 70 years, obviously, the safety level of uh, motorsport has changed dramatically for the good, for the better. And so also Switzerland, maybe in the forthcoming years, will allow more and more motorsport events that honestly are more pacific than uh, soccer matches. So for sure, it's a nice opportunity for uh, a small country to have at least during the year some possible events of race with the race cars to raise up the value of what a country can offer situation updated as we have seen after the indy 500 so we are still in the game to win the championship as alfa romeo now dethroned ferrari from the first place after three races out of seven you may have noticed that also every loading menu has always uh, the original leaflet, original cover of the event. Another really good touch from Valerio and his team to allow us to be completely immersed into a total graphically reproduced real season back then. Obviously the game maybe is not fine-tuned from a driving module like Automobilista or GTR2 or R Factor, etc. But it is anyway a game that can give you a deep degree also on car setup that I'm not going to present here with a honorable and decent and credible driving style. So give it a try because uh, I think you will have uh, a lot of fun playing this game, I'm sure. Let's finish the session, practice one, practice two, three, four, qualifying, Fangio Fagioli, Ascari Bira, Whitehead, Rosier. We are ready so for the warm up, that will be dry, the race will be dry, again, good. The car setup, I'm using basically the Silverstone one with just uh, some modifications and uh, one of these modifications is, let me see, four laps, so I want to be covered almost for the double and maybe soft tires, yes, maybe for the long straights I can think to, as you can see, as I said for Silverstone, the fourth gear is long like this 
around 200 kilometers per hour, or like for Indianapolis, goes up to 50. So there isn't, let's say, the possibility to have a mid uh, solution. So I would uh, keep things like they are, maybe just reduce the first gear with the experience of difficult starts so far. Maybe I save it and keep it as it is for this appointment, just trying as it is. One day I promise I will uh, go into the car setup also of this game. It is very deep, like every modern car setup within a set of course, automobilista or whatever you like. In this way, obviously, it's just uh, graphically different and many menus, bumpers, uh, dampers, etc. are just divided into subcategories, but more or less is like any other modern game. You can see the easy engine is the same. That being said, let's go to race with the Bremgarten Swiss Grand Prix. Okay, look, the red flag, the right side of the head of the blue car, the, two, the number two in red. It's quite shorter in the first gear, maybe we will have to shorten it. To shorten it, sorry, further and further. Because the start is always critical. First laps where I'll try to follow the AI that is very prone to crash the car. Correcto Pascari while trying to climb the hills. Pit ahead with all this mess. So between the hills of Switzerland, the Swiss Grand Prix at its first edition is underway. Bonetto out. P9. Rosier out. So did spin. He's spun. Now let's try to kill, catch Luigi Villoresi between the woods. As maybe said at the beginning, the level of geometry for tracks regarding F1 challenge are not precise for each millimeter. No laser scanned, no GPS used. From what I remember, they are manually produced, and that's it. There's smoke here, someone in the woods. It was maybe Vino Resi, yes, because she all. What happened here? Summer, okay, retired. The pavé. Maybe with a less rigid car, we would have kept a decent speed. But we are at the start finish line, just passed by the graphene here. Or uh, the Grafen Reed in German. Oops, oops, no, 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 no. Ascari with our back. So this game is not intended to be perfect reproduction of 
each millimeter for each track, but you can add the versions, for example, the old Monza. on the lens on the to wide but you can enjoy really much really a lot the game itself it's very fun well made from a lot of perspectives. You can really dig into history. Drive every car. There are also many B cars, test cars. Never raced cars like the Trussard from the one back in the 80s. I'm just sorry for not having the possibility in this game, I hope they will implement it. Why did this car went off? The possibility to remove original arms and steering wheel like uh, it is for Factor, uh, GTR 1 and 2, Mobilist, etc. We really a dream to let you watch through the steering wheel with my point of view here. Maybe in the future. And also the group of Mario Bertolotti is more than available, more than talented to understand, listen and ask. Suggest, for suggestions by us as users. Sorry, but I have been shy breathing on my back. I must uh, get rid in some way of uh, the hard front end prepared when I see tracks with the pavé. Last lap, because having a front end uh, too stiff uh, generates this silly attitude of feeling uh, fatigue. To Oops. to counter force the body compared to the asphalt or the asphalt. Nine seconds from the calf frame, the the graph frame. The graph a bit, if you was a German guy. Ten seconds now, we never catch the P5 unluckily, so without any retirements I will be sixth and first without points. Back in the woods. 
how crazy it was to race at 200 km per hour with these safety conditions. I mean, okay, it's true that also, I mean, Jim Clark died because he finished in the woods of the Hockenheim Ring, but I must say, if it wasn't for Jackie Stewart, we would have had uh, much more fatalities in the 70s and in the 80s. So let's say hello to Sir Jackie Stewart. And we Oops. At the end succeeded on losing the car in the last corner. Kind of effect on the pavé asphalt. And unless someone is retiring the pit. No, we finish P6 while Fagioli wins the race. But let's see also the other Fangio second. Wow, Alfa Romeo, Fagioli, Fangio, Parnell, top 3, Bira and Tulo, or Tulo de Grafenried, I don't know, Enrico Plato, Enrico Plate, like he's racing as Nino Farino, 16 out of the points. So now Prince Bira back at the top, like after the first race, Parnell, Fagioli, Chiron, Farina, 5 points short from the top. Alfa Romeo dominating the constructor standings, not a surprise back then. Spa Franco Champ, the old version, very nice. Let's go with uh, five points to recover. And after four races, uh, we have basically three races Spa, Reims, and Monza, I suppose, maybe. Let's see. So, finish session. Fangio, Fagioli, Rosia, Scari, Bira, Parnell. Head. Practice 3, practice 4, qualifying. Fagioli, Fangio, Rosier, Whitehead, Prince, Bira. Warm up, good. For the race, 3 laps, I would load the Switzerland Bram Garden, that in my opinion can be worked load and let's go to Belgium Spa so it's a very basic uh, car setup where uh, I just uh, completed a uh, front and uh, very stiff and uh, apart from a front end very stiff uh, the rear end is very soft but uh, saving this uh, car setup maybe can be reduced with the first gear the rest we keep as it is and yes it's just uh, I would say a practical uh, car setup with the car pointed with the front and high with the rear to make a turning point around the front end and that's it then it's just fine tuning between gears to properly take advantage of long straights, uh, etc. Okay, we have to break the car because we are downhill. Let's see the start. Yes, maybe a bit better. Orange, Avignon in front of us. Not to be taken from the The graphic lead. The name is correct. Let's try to pass as much as possible cars since the start. Well, it's very. advantage of the group more compact within itself. Uh, 
a bit more of a driving uh, in a place like this at 240 km per hour with cars made of uh, steel with the first usage of aluminum P3, Fangio Fagioli and this is the old Masus First gear is a bit better. White head twice internal line. Okay, let's go back. Half of the race almost completed. Fangio and Fagioli if I'm not wrong. Too early the third gear. Martin. Ah, is the car uh, flipping at the beginning? Another race 
before the end of the season. And like in the old days, you can notice that it was uh, always a uh, grab of points after each race and with consistency. really hope to win championship. Nothing. First gear here. Last lap. Last lap. Sorry for my pronunciation. Some retirement. 11 seconds over Fagioli. Good. Spin throwing away almost an easy victory thanks to the power of the Alfa Romeo. So, yes, we win. Nino Farina is racing Fagioli Fangio Whitehead Ascari. Let's go to see. Now we are at the top with Fagioli and Prince Pira and Reg Parnell. Two races to go and uh, quite a short uh, classification. So the only hope is always arrive in front of both, I would say, these three drivers, Fagioli, Bira, Parnell. Let's go. Alfa Romeo basically won already the championship. Next stop, Reims, uh, my, one of my favorite circuits, my favorite stories, my favorite everything. To me, Reims is absolutely something that will stay forever in my heart. There is. Uh, for sure a sad story about uh, Luigi Musso, especially here, that died uh, in 1957 or 58, I do not remember. This version is the one arriving up to the, as you can see, the town of G, but then uh, the grey line you see between G and the rest of the black trace of the track has become the Virage du Calvaire, that was anyway a modification followed. So again, skip sessions. Practice three. Qualification. Fangio Fagioli. Bira. Perfect. The three contenders <laughs> at the top. Good. Qualifying. Let's see. Fangio Fagioli Rosier. At least Bira is sixth. But I must beat these two aces. Warm up. Race. Where again? I would call back the Belgian car setup just used and save it under Reims 
1950. As you can see, it's very well and completely full of order, the work that Valerio and his teammate and his group have done. So it's all very clear, all very understandable, uh, absolutely fantastic. The race will be six laps, so we'll have also to lift this time, we can keep soft tires, and that's it. And this is start, look at the windshield, red flag in the left corner. Well, I start a bit late because there's always like a Monte Carlo. They tend to crash. And here we are, we arrived to the village of Gil. Ooh, Serafini out. What a shunt. Bonetto, Sommer, Ascari. Race over. Why? <laughs> but sorry, but happened something. Now we are considered twenty third for an accident. Well, maybe it's a bug. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> looks like IndyCar the race number eight where. I had that strange crash uh, in the middle of nowhere. So, the race is over 23rd, with Fagioli and Fangio winning, so maybe one of the two is world champion at this point. Fagioli at least will do a placement in the last race of the season, and Fangio or me, yes, you can also win, but yes, we will gain uh, eight points maybe winning. Whatever, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> With Alfa Romeo already won the championship, Monza, let's go. Okay, eight points to recover from Fagioli, it's impossible to, to do it. Nice, I've been surprised, but that's it. Okay, final race of the season, Monza. Let's skip all the sessions. Don't look at the screen when uh, there are uh, falling cars, sometimes the pit lane allows just an amount of uh, cars, so qualifying with Fagioli, Rosier, Fangio, race. So we can take what was the French previous Reims 1950 car setup, load it and save it under Italy Monza 1950. Save, yes, eight laps, Fuel for 10, 
we are okay. Not yet the track with the open usage. Not only the modes that you are missing from the 60s. So, no front, uh, sorry, initial uh, with your double chicane or now it is prima variante, first variant. Curva grande or curva le pianone is like you know it today. No variante della roggia or the second chicane. Lesmos were more or less like we know them today. The second one was one much quicker to be taken quite exiting compared to nowadays. Then variante del serraglio, no variante a scali, it was just uh, not the original name, but it has been named Variante Ascari after the death of uh, Roberto Ascari during a private session in 1957. Then, no parabolica, just a double corner. And here you are on the main street. Despite this, the robot was already available since uh, the 20s. Okay. Since the beginning, I do not know. Anyway, P7. Let's try to win at least the Italian GP with uh, Nino Farina. Even that I'm ruining history without making him win again, making real life. Right head in front, a scary panel of fungi. That line mark. can do a very Italian Mafia style thing, it is trying to crash Fagioli, maybe it was a runner up in 1950, do not remember, and so avoid him to score points, shall we do it, come on, it's a game, we will try to do it, So at least 10 cars will go against them. Good job, let's see. I'm so silly. Here. 
because it's not so easy to throw off the track someone. I should ask to Lewis Hamilton how it is possible to do it without having issues with the device directive. That's rain now, Ooh. so it should be easier to throw off someone. Also finish myself. I like the immediate, sudden, suddenly way the arrival of the rain. To go. I'm not currently winning the championship. I'm not throwing out a jolly. Is losing now. Uh, in a battle. Two laps to go. The steering wheel uh, not straight anymore. Let's try, let's try again our killing attitude. to go in a moment while uh, I'm just in it one second of gap I'm not capable and able to throw away a job in any way in general the AI always win if you go side by side
have destroyed the car this time. Last lap, and Luigi Fagioli deserving more than me this title is going to clinch his fake F1 driver title I didn't succeed in my first uh, aim to win the title with the original world champion Nino Farina but I say that anyway it was the best for 1950 Maybe I succeeded in crashing Fagioli. I've seen a car flip in the air. Fangio second currently. Fangio very close. He's regaining some time less than one second for Manuel but there is a better left car lucky <laughs> in the last corner karma, karma, karma I was absolutely an indecent uh, driver for sure <laughs> and Fangio wins the last race uh, taking away my 8 points so right this way because I've tried to kill Nino Farina and in fact Nino Farina is retired where is Nino Farina? Sorry, uh, Luigi Fagioli, 19th, yes, so as Nino Farina I'm so a lemon that I didn't win even without my contender out of the race. So, sorry, but I'm Italian, very mafia style, Andrangheta and Camorra style. So, at the end, Juan Manuel Fangio wins the championship with a photo finish last corner end of the season. Fagioli with uh, the same points, but if the computer puts Juan Manuel Fangio at the top should have at least uh, one best placement than Fagioli and as as Nino Farina he is racing 22 so really an indecent performance as always with Ike is racing but we can go on Alfa Romeo easily wins the constructors championship already winning the title at, after four races something like that the majority of cars present back then were Alfa Romeo Ah, okay, that's it. Championship summary finished. Uh, okay, has been uh, nice, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> have you on board for this first tentative of uh, really a silly, if you pardon me, way to propose you the history of Formula One in a very Italian, uh, sad mafia style uh, way, but I wanted, uh, apart from my silliness, uh, to bring you on board on a nice theme that can be for sure driven hardcore 100% uh, all the races uh, all the laps uh, all whatever you, wa you like you want and um, it allows you really to to do whatever you you prefer because you could also i don't know race the equipe nationale uh, belgian choosing uh, mr class and yes let's say that we choose the belgian nationality and you drive a Talbot, an old Talbot, very nice indeed, or uh, a said, uh, I don't know, let's find out, for example, the Joe Kelly private team, 
You choose Joe Kelly, let's fake that he is uh, American. And the car will be the Alta, who studies stories of motorsport can remember this car also. I mean, it's all reproduced uh, at the maximum uh, possibility for uh, what uh, Valerio and his uh, collaborators have in their hands. So really, I don't know, I will not stress you enough to give it a try to this uh, game, this title. And uh, yes, some old cars maybe are, I don't know, boring to drive, difficult to set up. In general, I would say with every car in this game, you can uh, stiff the front end and leave instead smooth the rear end. Just fine tune the gears and then you can choose to dispute all the season that you like. And maybe, yes, you can uh, here and there take and do some uh, changes also to the car setup to perfectly match what is uh, each single track. But believe me, even if you don't uh, do a championship, even if you do just a test day or single races, you can choose also not only the 1950, in this case, race tracks, but you can go, for example, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, or Benguela, I don't remember which kind of countries, sorry for uh, my ignorance, but Buenos Aires in version 53, 54, 55, etc. up to the 98th version, the last one having a Formula 1 championship within, or Buenos Aires, uh, I don't know, Street City Circuit, Adelaide, I mean, if you go on and on and on, also all the American races on ovals, etc. There is everything inside here, different eras, different years, or whatever. I've never found a game so deep and so well, uh, full of uh, opportunities, full of uh, really each imaginable and not imaginable proposition. So I would say maybe give it a try. Ah, oh, sorry, there is also the sunny day version, the day version, the night version. I mean, which game can give you the deepness of this title? Maybe no one. And really, if you are fair, at least one euro can be the price you pay for this incredible work. Always updated, always uh, available to be explained, uh, supported uh, on the Facebook group they have created. So really, this was just a tentative to show you a season and uh, which kind of possibility you can get with this title. Then you can uh, tell to Valerio what you like, what you don't like, what you feel, what you don't feel, uh, whatever. The is, uh, I would say, embarrassing the level of availability that this game has to offer. And uh, enjoy it. And Happy Formula 1 2023 season for who, like you, maybe will follow the season. I'm not really catched to the current situation of Formula 1 in the last 15 years. And uh, so, let's say, we will keep a Formula 1 theme on Ike's Racing channel for sure, but I will not, let's say, maybe be part of the buzz regarding Formula 1 this year. And I will concentrate maybe to bring you as much as possible more and more and more content uh, to as much as possible create a pleasant Ikes Racing channel. But that's it for the moment. And so with the real world champion back in 1950, Nino Farina, and with the Alfa Romeo 158, I just say thank you very much for watching. That's it for the moment. And uh, best wishes to you all, to your beloved, best luck and best uh, good things for your lives and uh, see you very soon on Aki's Racing channel also with the Mafia and Drang Takamora attitude on uh, track from Marco, from Monza, from Aki's Racing channel. Ciao, see you very soon, stay very well, bye bye, see you, ciao. <laughs>